I've been playing a lot of Mega Man lately. I picked up the X Legacy Collection, and after playing those games, except X3, I was still in the mood to play more Mega Man. I went back and played the rest of the Zero games, then Mega Man 11 came out. You know what? Let's just play all the classic games. Okay, I haven't played every other game in this series, god no. Capcom loved milking the hell out of these games back in the day. Mainly, there's a few X games I haven't played yet, and Zero Four's final level was a pain in the ass. But when it comes to the classic series, the one that started it all, I've barely touched them. I've only finished 2, 10, and 11, and now 1, of course. But despite owning both classic legacy collections and being super hyped when Mega Man was revealed for Smash, it feels like I've been living a lie. I'll admit that I'm more of a fan of the X series onwards, but gosh darn it, I really need to play these games. How about I review all of them while I'm at it? I've always wanted to do a proper marathon, but I don't know, never really felt like it. I've done kind of half marathons, but I just play older games on my backlog, but honestly, that's just what I do at this point. I probably should have started with a series involving less games, but I was already dead set on this a few months ago. Especially after playing Mega Man 11. Alright, the classic Mega Man marathon starts now. Ready? Mega Man. 1. The NES original. Not the Game Gear one. Or the DOS one. Why did Capcom use the same names so many times? I feel that this one hasn't really aged well, and for the first game in the series, that's to be expected. Otherwise, I didn't really know too much going in, other than the Robot Masters, except Bomb Man for some reason, and that infamous Yellow Devil fight. But funny personal story with this game. After enjoying Mega Man 10, I was gonna buy another classic game off Wii Virtual Console. What you say? I was going to buy Mega Man 2, since that's the one everyone recommends playing, but there was this upcoming game called Mega Man Universe, which not only had a level editor, but also included a full remake of Mega Man 2. So I figured I'd buy Mega Man 1, just play 2 when Universe came out. I think you can fill in the blanks. I did play Mega Man 2 with the Legacy Collection, but I was devastated when Universe was cancelled. I not only didn't finish a single stage from the first game, but also a game I was really looking forward to is dead. I was so let down by it that I didn't even pick up Mega Man 2. It wasn't even worth it anymore, man. Mega Man 1 reminds me of a sad day of my childhood, and we are not off to a great start. So, the story. Since this was the NES, none of it's told in game. Well, time to break out the crappy MS Paint drawings again. Dr. Light. <coughs> Dr. Light and his assistant, Dr. Wily, made Mega Man and six more robots in the land of Monsteropolis. Why am I even trying? The story in the US manual isn't canon. Capcom of America just made half this stuff up. Monsteropolis? What is this garbage? Okay, now for the actual story. The year is 20XX. Thomas Light and Edward Wiley were colleagues, and I'm pretty sure friends to some extent, at the Robot Institute of Technology. Dr. Light wanted to make robots to benefit mankind, while Dr. Wiley just said, screw you guys, and wanted to conquer the world. Light wanted to make human-like robots that had artificial intelligence, so he made Proto Man. You're not supposed to know that until Mega Man 3, though. Dr. Light made Proto Man a little too independent, and he went off after misunderstanding some of Paris, thinking he'd lose his individuality. Afterwards, he made rock and roll. So, the scientist thing wasn't working out and you became a rock star? No, no, no. The robots were named Rock and Roll. They were technically siblings, it's, it's a pun, but anyway. Rock became Dr. Light's assistant, and Roll became the housekeeper. Light made six more robots for industrial use, and Dr. Wily decided to show up again after god knows how long and stole them. He reprogrammed them and decided to use them for his evil deeds and stuff. Rock and Roll were just helper robots, not really designed for combat, so he just left them alone. Afterwards, Rock volunteered to be converted into a fighting robot, and thus, Mega Man was born. Or oh, Rock Man if you're Japanese. Now, it's up to Mega Man to defeat Dr. Wily and his six robot masters. And then he does. Dr. Wily presumably escapes. Repeat for god knows how many sequels. Fight Mega Man for everlasting peace. <laughs> Capitalism. <laughs> it's Mega Man, what did you expect? Hey, spoilers. This game is 30 years old and has been released like 8 times by this point. If you were honestly worried about spoilers, that's on you. And you know, it's really annoying how boring they made the American release. Like, just look at the US box art. Is that supposed to be Mega Man? What's so mega about him? It looks like he accidentally destroyed half the city on his way to find the bathroom. This box art was apparently made under heavy time constraints and the artist has never seen anything from the game, resulting in this monstrosity. Capcom figured the Western audiences wouldn't like the more cartoony cover that Japan had, but come on. It's all cartoony and colorful. Kids would have eaten that up. 
I love me some good box art. That's why they're so front and center in my thumbnails. The Japanese box art is great. The US box art is not. At least in the Legacy Collection, they remade the Japanese covers in English. So, with the most recent release, you can just pretend that this doesn't exist. And just look at this boring title screen. Just a logo and press start. This was the NES, and I would've been fine with it, but the Japanese version has a much better title screen. Do I even need to explain this? Once you get past the title screen, they didn't really make any graphical changes as far as I know, so at least there's that. Now on to the actual game. Mega Man has always let you pick what order to do stages in, and the original is no exception. Although there's only six stages as opposed to the usual eight. And Mega Man will jump and shoot your way through essentially obstacle courses and fight a boss at the end of each stage. The boss gives you a new weapon with limited ammo, and each boss is weak to a specific weapon. So if you do the stage in the right order, it makes the end boss easier to take down. The first stage I picked was Gus Man's. I hear it was pretty easy without his weakness, so why not? Also, I totally think a battle net with Gus Man for his original incarnation. You know, I'll probably be saying that a lot during this marathon. The beginning of Gus Man's stage is really annoying. There's these sliding platforms that drop when they go over the holes in the railing. What's dumb about these things is that they don't work the way you would expect them to. Instead of falling when the platform is above the hole, the platform falls when the base touches the hole. Yeah, this little thing you probably didn't notice. And to top it off, this section's right over a bottomless pit. Have fun. The little section at the end where we have to make these precisely timed jumps can just screw right off. It doesn't help that when a platform disappears below you, Mega Man just rockets towards the bottom of the screen like he instantly gained 3,000 pounds. It's so strange to me that they make this beginning section so annoying and difficult. For the wrong reasons, I may add. When the rest of the stage is honestly pretty easy. The enemies in this stage can be pretty annoying, but that's basically it. These construction worker dudes are placed in, like, the worst spots. Imagine Hammer Brothers, but with shields. Ugh. Then there's this guy that throws his pickaxes over a pit so he can't even go under them. This dude respawns, like, the moment you go off screen to dodge his last attack. Like, come on, dude. Placing spikes down one path of a leap of faith was kind of a dick move, too. But with these annoyingly placed hazards, they're pretty easy to avoid once you've seen them, so overall, not a huge deal. In this game, there's enemies in the corridor leading to the boss, which is weird, but whatever. I guess it's so that you can grind for weapon energy if you die the boss, but here's the issue with that. In this game, there's a point system. You get points by the usual methods. But enemies can also drop these little orb things to give you bonus points at the end of each stage. And that's what they'll mostly be dropping. It's hard to grind for health and ammo when your enemies mostly drop useless junk you don't care about. The enemies in the boss corridors serve little purpose, but at least they fixed it after this game. Along with dishing the point system. From then on, the stages were mostly pretty enjoyable. Albeit nothing to write home about. Cutman stages a bunch of easy enemies and obstacles in a straight path, making this a pretty good first stage. Cutman himself is really easy too. If you use Gutsman's weapon, he dies in two hits. Even with the standard buster, he still goes down like a kid hit by a bus. I thought Bomb Man stage is really easy too, mostly for the same reasons. It's a little harder than Cut Man's, but not by much. A like Man stage is just a total bitch. This stage is too vertical, and it doesn't really fit with the controls. The worst parts are these dumb ladder segments. The enemies knock you off and you get hit, and you'll usually end up going back a few screens. This disappearing block section right here is so damn nerve wracking. If you fall, you'll go down pretty far and have to climb back up. Oh man, I really wish that whoever designed this stage gets much better at game design. What, you expect me to insult the poor man? The dude probably just did his best. Please get better at your job though, you're messing with other people's sanity. There are these little electrical currents, but they're pretty easy to avoid when you pay attention. The weird part about a like man stage is there was another weapon just chilling out. No need either guts man to a like man's weapon to get to it, but why is it just sitting out like this? This is the magnet beam. It shoots out a little floating platform that disappears after a little bit. But why call it the Magnet Beam? What does this have to do with magnets? I guess Floating Platform Laser didn't really roll off the tongue. Iceman stage is annoying too. It's got too many of these dumbass disappearing blocks. Does anyone even enjoy these things? They're just a pain in the ass and don't even feel hard. Just annoying. Luckily, you can just skip most of this dumbassery by using my lone savior, the Magnet Beam. It's not just in this stage either. You can use the Magnet Beam to skip a lot of dumb platforming sections. Even the beginning of Gutsman's stage, if you're willing to backtrack. Just about any horizontal platforming section can be easily dealt with using this one ability. Praise be. And on that day, a lord and savior, Magda Beam, cometh and helpeth thine Mega Man on his quest to defeateth Dr. Wily. Inafune 4-3. Fireman's stage was easily my favorite. The platforming was fair, there weren't any digitally placed obstacles, 
and freezing fire using the ice slash was cool. My only real issue with this stage is this one section with the fire waves. As far as I can tell, you can't dodge it unless you use the magna beam to skip it. Why? Other than that, I really wish more stages in the game were designed like this. I have been pointing out a lot of annoyances, but there were a lot of things that I really liked. The presentation is easily one of the best on NES. A lot of sprites are really detailed, none of them have that weird NES look to it. You know what I mean? Like, you look at a lot of NES games and just think, yeah, that's an NES game. The Mega Man games don't seem to have that. There's a lot of cool background details too, like these weird tower things at Bomb Man stage, the cliff sides and scaffolds and Guts Man stage, the whole ice aesthetic and Ice Man stage just looks really good, even today. And I love how Luck Man stage looks. There's Sukachu in the background, there's these little electrical rods of decoration. It's simple, but it's so nice looking. I like how some enemies change colors in different stages too, that's a nice touch. The soundtrack of this game is nice as well. I really like the music of Bomb Man and Luck Man stages. Although, by Mega Man standards, it's a little on the weak side. It's got some highlights, but it's only pretty good on average. I really like how useful most weapons felt. The low and cutter is good for enemies above and below you. The elect beam is just good for everything. And the ice slash may not do damage to most enemies, but it'll stop them in their tracks. The fire storm was pretty useful for a few bosses, but it's pretty average. The super Worm and hyper bomb are almost useless, though. The super Worm is only used to throw these big blocks and nothing else. But, the Elect Beam can also destroy them. See the problem? This thing's good for like two bosses, and that's about it. The Hyper Bomb I use against the Gutsman we fight, but nothing else. The issue is that it takes too long to detonate. By that point, I could have just used the Elect Beam, or hell, even the Mega Buster would deal with most enemies. Uh, there were a few useless ones, but four out of the seven weapons were useful, which is good in my book. There's a few stages that are even made easier by having the boss's weakness weapon. The boss not only gets easier, but you can get rid of hazards too. Like, in a Lucky Man stage, there's these dumb tis that can knock you off of tight platforms. But if you use the cutter, you can easily destroy them. Or in Fire Man stage, there's these fire pillars you can freeze with the ice cutter. I noticed that Mega Man 11 did this too, but to a much bigger extent. It's kind of a cool thing about 11, and I haven't really heard anyone make the connection to the original. It just makes the stage that much cooler to play without the weakness. The bosses aren't much to write home about, though. They're pretty standard Mega Man fights. You hit him with the weakness, they go around significantly easier. But then there's Fire Man, who doesn't even flinch when you hit him with his weakness weapon. Huh? You blast me in giant ice shorts? It hurts like hell. What do you think I care, bitch? A big issue with bosses is that you can still die after you beat them. Like, what the hell, man? The stage isn't over until we pick up the thing they dropped, so you could potentially still get killed after the fact. It's really dumb. But honestly, I thought this game has aged fairly well, all things considered. It's a little rough around the edges, but it's still an enjoyable time. There were some good highlights that really feel like a Mega Man game. The big issue is the lack of passwords, so you'll have to play it in one sitting. Unless you're playing on new releases that have save states. So that can be pretty easily remedied, at least. I felt people were being really harsh about this game. I really couldn't see it. And then I got to the Wily stages. Alright, I guess this is spoiler territory, so here's the time to skip to, but come on. This game's 30 years old. Once you beat all six main stages, you play the final stages at Wily's Castle. The first Wily stage is pretty alright. Since you have all the weapons by this point, they still incorporating them into the level design, which I always liked about Mega Man. At this point, I started to notice the spikes do not care about your precious invincibility frames. In the first Mega Man, if you touch spikes, you die. Invincible or not. It's a real pain for a few sections because enemies can knock you back into insta-kill death spikes. It's luckily fixed for every subsequent game. This one section here felt weird too. I think you required to use the magnet beam, but that seemed like an optional ability. So, if you get to this point, you have to go back to a like man stage to get it. I didn't think I'd have to backtrack in a Mega Man game, what the hell? I luckily already had it, but they should have made the magnet beam harder to miss if they were going to do this. Alright, Elephant in the Room Man. The Yellow Devil. Oh my god, who designed this boss? Do you enjoy your sanity? Have fun losing it. It's cool that the boss isn't even in the room when the fight starts, but that's the only compliment you get from me, buddy. This dude separates into these orb things that you have to dodge. The amount of precision in your jumps required to dodge this attack is ridiculous. At first, you have to hit his eye once he's full again. Oh, did you miss that? Because you only have time for one shot before we have to repeat this entire process. This boss is the hardest in the game by far, and it's tedious. You have to dodge the same attack the entire fight, and if you make one slightly off jump, you'll get hit. This dude is borderline unfair, but there is one saving grace. 
Using the divine power of the pause button, you can kill this dude with one shot. This exploit turns the hardest boss in the game into one of the easiest. It's goddamn magnificent. This had to be one of the weirdest playground rumors. Hey, if you hit the yellow guy in Mega Man with the E weapon and match his select button, you'll kill him really easily. <laughs> Next you tell me how there's apparently a warp pipe at the end of 1-2 in Mario. Yeah, I use this exploit. No regrets. Although I did go back and beat him legit after I finished the game. And let me tell you, I've never been so focused on anything in my entire life. It took 50 straight minutes of reloading the safe state I had made before the fight. I must have died at least 30 times, but I finally did it. Screw this guy. After that, there isn't anything nearly as hard. These dudes at the start of the second Wily stage tend to push you into the bottomless pit, but they can be dealt with pretty easily. The boss of the third stage is annoying though, but that's only because the blocks don't respawn until you get a game over. So if you don't win, you don't get a true second attempt at the fight until you lose all your lives. I was getting so many game overs to reset the fight that the enemies beforehand started glitching out. I'm not sure how to respond to these things, I can't tell if they're hilarious or terrifying. The last stage is easily the most ash holishly designed. These dudes will knock you off the ladder into a bed of spikes. Dick move, guys. This section right at the end can really screw you off. You have to make these stupidly precise jumps, and if you fall, you have to start the stage all over again. Alright, I've had enough BS for one day, time for save states. Now here's the real fun part, the boss rush. You have to refight Bomb, Fire, Ice, and Gutsman all in one go. You refought Cutman and Electman in the previous stage, so it's not as bad as it could have been. Because here's the kicker. You not only have to fight these guys all on one life, but you also don't get more health at the end of each fight. Seriously, what the hell? There was Horde, and then there was Cheap. The big issue here is Fireman. He's so damn resilient that you need a practically perfect run of him to be able to finish the last two bosses. Three of the four bosses are pretty easy, but it's really Fireman that puts this whole thing over the edge. And if you get a game over, you gotta start all the way back at the beginning of the stage with all the insta-kill hazards. I love save states. Hey, I played off the Legacy Collection, and they knew how cheap this game can be. The final boss isn't even worth talking about, to be honest. He's surprisingly easy by comparison, and only has like one attack. After three tries, I beat him without issue. I can see why people say the first Mega Man hasn't aged well. There are some good highlights, but it's during the Wily stage that it can get borderline unfair. Even with the dumb difficulty spikes, I still had a fun time with it. It's rough around the edges, but I'd probably still play it again. Assuming I have save states. And seriously, if you can beat this game without save states, I salute you. There was also the PSP remake with Powered Up, but I don't have a PSP, so I'll be skipping that one for this marathon. Maybe some other time. However, you should not start with the first game. Mega Man fans should be able to find some enjoyment in it, but if you're new to the series, I'd say start with Mega Man 2. Speaking of which, this has been Flame Guy, and the Mega Man Marathon continues next time with the big one. Mega Man 2, if it wasn't already obvious. Seeing as I already finished it, it'll be nice being in familiar territory for once. I've actually tried to review it before, but when I did, I couldn't beat it for the life of me. I did beat it on stream like a year later, but it feels kinda weird actually going through with it this time. Well, take care everyone. See you guys next mission.